So hi, if you're watching this, uh, welcome to our session zero of Stone Top. An entirely innocent use of an incredibly cursed object. This useless lesbian being fucking useless. I read a great paper back in my anthropology degree. What does Bastard have going for him? So things that we've already done prior to this point or prior to starting recording, uh, we took about 15 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes to let everyone read the setting guide, just kind of a, just an overview of the uh, kind of shared established setting of, of the stone top world. Um, there's a lot of things to kind of hook off of and and um, ideas that that the game tries to set up as established givens, but then a lot of the, the details of the world and a lot of the blanks are going to get filled in by us in play. Um, specifically, things that were called out that the group is interested in is the history of the makers, like the ancient race that that uh, um, uh, Stone Top is built on top of, uh, as well as the kind of the mystery of deep water. Things uh, everyone knows that deep water is dangerous in this world, and that there are things there that'll drag you to your doom. Um, and also some discussion of the things below, which are sort of the big bad Cthulhu, elder dark demon monsters that live buried deep in the ground um, <clears throat> to be explored and discovered later. So a lot of interest in those sorts of things, as well as getting out to uh, some of the neighboring towns, particularly Marsh Edge, exploring some of those, those watery areas and doing uh, just exploring the past in general. Um, because it sleeps unquietly. Uh, also, we talked about uh, basically lines and veils, content that we wanted to have excluded and content that we wanted to just always fade to black on. I'm not gonna go into detail about that, but what we decided on, but just I wanted to point out that we had that conversation already. And then uh, Luke and Hobbs and Kat made characters. Uh, Kat, if you wouldn't mind going first, uh, introduce yourself, please. My character's name is Karina pronouns are she her she's originally from Lagos um but she left there probably 20 years ago since then is for this particular world I would say quite well traveled she's been all over the place and if she has come across a bad idea she's like I want a piece of that and went after it and that typically led to her needing to move onward fairly rapidly after that so she wound up settling in Stone Top about five years ago um, and has surprised herself at still being here five years on. In terms of appearance, she's probably late 30s, early 40s. She's pretty solidly built. She's one of those people that my grandmother would used to say could pull the plow herself. Just a very sturdy woman with short dark hair and olive skin and uh, green eyes. So Lagos is is kind of, kind of the uh, down south, like that's the more civilized part of the world in general. What led you, I know you said that you surprised yourself by staying here five years back. What's, what's the first thing that got you to stay? I think she might've rolled into town bloody and hard up and the tavern keeper basically put her up and let her recover and they really hit it off, became really good friends. And every time an opportunity to move on presented itself, Karina would come up with a reason why now just wasn't the right time. It seems like someone who has traveled that widely and that broadly and has always moved on is probably not used to kindness and hospitality. And like it wasn't okay. the first time he had been kind to her, okay. um, but for whatever reason, this time it made her want to stick around and help out as opposed to just being like, thanks, I appreciate it. I'm going to keep going. What's up with uh, Karina's background? I chose Destined, which reads, fate has laid her hand upon you and set you on a course for greatness. Um, so that happened when Karina was about 18 and her immediate response was, don't like that. Um, and that was more or less the impetus for her to leave town initially and run off as far as she could in the opposite direction. 
and do literally everything that she could think of that was the opposite of being destined on a course for greatness. Like, how did you know that you were destined? Um, first thing that happened is she had very vivid and bizarre dreams for several nights in a row. Like she dreamed um, about spirits and monsters and things being on fire. And she was like, I don't know what any of this shit is. My aunt has been putting weird crap in the stew again. Um, and then a spirit appeared to her and told her that she needed to go to join the adventurers who would be arriving in town the next day. And that was when she was like, and I'm out. And just packed a bag and very calmly stole one of the family's horses and left town. Were there any repercussions from that that you know of? Um, I think she ran into her brother at one point, like a decade later. Um, and he had taken over, um, I think her family were merchants and I think he was either like had taken over the business or was working in some sort of supervisory fashion. And she ran into him at Gordon's Delve and he was like, I thought you were dead. What the fuck happened? She was like, um, yeah stuff happened um was not honest with him at all about what had actually occurred um and i think it was a pretty brief interaction before he was like well you have to come back with me and see the family they'll be so excited to hear that you're alive and he was like yes i will definitely come with you i just have to go pack my bags and then never came back <laughs> i'm sensing a bit of a theme emerging so uh, what are the elements that you chose for your destiny? So the elements we chose was your coming foretold, protect, fire, and the makers. Okay, so we're gonna fire the makers. <laughs> Great, Definitely. good start. The spirit was like, your coming has been foretold. We have awaited you. The time is now. This has been years in the making, and Karina was like, I want none of this. Does anyone else in town know about your destiny, or does anyone else, period, know about your destiny? I think that the innkeeper, the lady who runs the public house, I think mm -hmm. she might. Do you believe that, that you are, in fact, destined, or is it just more well, like... She, she believes is that it definitely was a mistake, that okay. she was like, if... The, the spirit has made a mistake. They're definitely looking for someone else. Uh, and that if she were called upon to do something important, that it would go badly. Got it. That she's not cut out for it at all. Okay, cool. Uh, did anybody else have any questions for this round? Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Luke or Hobbs, either of you want to go next? Uh, yeah, so I am playing Alex. Uh, whose pronouns are they, them? They are the light bearer. Um, their background is soul on fire. Uh, you led a worldly life, a life of fear and doubt, base pleasures and petty grudges, a life like so many others. But something happened. Injury, illness, a brush with death, perhaps a moment of such profound misery and self-loathing that you thought you could fall no further. There in the dark, Helios light shone upon you, igniting in your soul, lifting you and filling you with a profound sense of purpose. And specifically, I think like uh, Alex, Alex lived a life of violence back in oh. Lagos. Um, they're from like, Lagos originally as well? They, they are, they're also from Lagos originally. Like they were a professional soldier, a professional mercenary even. Like they they did bloody violent unpleasant things to both people who deserved it and people who didn't, and they were very good at it. Okay. And then there came a point at which they kind of like got their shit together and turned their life around. They are well weathered, so I think they're like I want to say they're like in their mid fifties, but like kind of well like well pre well preserved for fifty. Sure. 
Um, and that's, I think that's contributed to by the fact that they're like, uh, they don't, they, their head is bald and they don't keep a beard. And so like, there is no like graying to cue how old they are. Sure. There's just like a lot of, a lot of laugh lines and smile lines around the, the eyes and the mouth. Um, because they are jovial. Uh, they have a melodious voice and they have uh, a threadbare cloak. Their fashion is kind of like uh, engulfing and comfy, but in a kind of like well-worn way. Hmm. Um, yeah. How, uh, how and when did you end up in Stone Top? I think they came to Stone Top probably like 10 or 15 years ago. Um, which I think was like, like, I think there is a pretty direct line in their life that you draw from like their epiphany about like how like miserable their life of violence was to them like moving to Stone Top. Like, I think that's a pretty direct six month period of their life. Was and it- then they was it like you had an epiphany and the epiphany was go to stone top or was the epiphany i need to put this behind me and you like a series of events deposited you yeah i think more more the latter it was like i need to put this behind me and you know like then they made it to marsh edge and like the the corruption and the greed you know and the like callous hearts of everyone in marsh edge like that didn't really do it for them either and you know, I think they tried working as, they were like, oh, like, what if I, like, made things? What if I was, like, a an artisan? So, like, they tried their hand at, like, you know, being, like, a, a potter or, like, a weaver in Marsh Edge. And, like, that didn't take and Marsh Edge didn't take. And they were like, oh, you know what? Like, actually, making things isn't what I need to do to make up for what I've done. Like, I need to bury my hands in the rich earth and I need to, like, make things grow. And I think that impulse kind of led them to Stone Top, uh, you know, where they settled down. I think the other the other thing uh, now that I think about it about appearance is that like uh, it seems like being kind of like being like broad and strong is maybe like a Lygosi trait because yeah Alex is like mm. well north of six foot but like oh, wow. more importantly like built like broad and like wide hipped and wide shouldered. And like made to lift heavy things, <laughs> you know, like you know, not necessarily for long yeah. periods of time, um, but for short, short bursts. Move to stand up. Okay, cool. Do you hold a formal position as a servant of Helior? Like, absolutely not. Okay. I think the the worship of Helior is like mostly a southern thing. And there, there is probably a priesthood. Okay. Uh, and so like, you know, outside of there, like, you know, people have maybe like heard the name, but it doesn't, they like, it rings a bell, but like, they don't really know what it's about. And like, you certainly wouldn't see like priests of Helio running around. It's not that organized. Gotcha. And certainly not up here. Yeah, certainly not this far north. Okay. Uh, it's mostly a Southern religion. Got it. Yeah. Um, and then how, uh, how have the people of Stone Top responded to your preaching? They're not out to like convert anyone. They're out to like, like they are seeking to live a better life because like, th like that is a thing that they think is worthwhile for them to do. Gotcha. And I think other people may well be won over by that, but like not in a missionary kind of way. Sure. Okay. Um... I would also like to note to everyone that I have minus one constitution because I wanted to be bad at defending. <laughs> also, I wanted, you gotta, the, I wanted it, the mechanics to bear out uh, to bear out the character's experience there. I have a question. Hmm. Um, so it sounds like you said you came to Stone Top what 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, like 12-ish. And then you came directly from Lagos, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um if if Alex had any kind of reputation. Uh, Karina would have been a teenager, I think, when that was happening, but she would probably have had an aware, I don't think Lagos is so big that she wouldn't have heard of him, depending on, like, the nature of what that was, like. Yeah, I think they were, like, 
in the same way that we talk about Brennan and the Claws in the same breath, mm. I think like, like I think Alex's name was on people's lips in the same way in reference to whatever mercenary company they like were part of. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I was the biggest, deadliest, most dangerous person, but not in a formal capacity. Was a very big badass. Okay. I don't want to glorify it in that way. Like, they weren't a badass. Oh, okay. They were a very deadly person. They didn't, there was nothing glorious. There was nothing, oh. it wouldn't even look cool on screen, right? Like, it was a lot of, like, having a sword fight with people and just, like, sticking knives in their ribs while they were occupied or just, like, breaking people's arms because they were bigger and stronger than other people in the middle gotcha. of a fight. It was okay. bloody and unpleasant and, like, they're not, they're not proud of it and I... I don't want the camera to be proud of it, if that makes sense. Yep, yep, I completely get that. Okay, cool. So Karina probably knew of Alex and probably like knew of them and yeah. a very dark reputation. Yeah, it was not it was not a good reputation. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think I, I don't necessarily want to like like get into the details of like what happened now, because I think that's something yeah, no, interesting to kind of like tease out in play, um, if that's okay with you, Kat. But it, like, that's totally all right. Um, but I definitely like that idea that like you got to Stone Top, and there was this farmer. There's this farmer and gardener there that you recognized as. Wait a minute. <laughs> Any relation to the uh, famous murder <laughs> mass murderer of the same name? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Alex just like sighs and really guess, you know, I, I changed that career. Was me. That was me. <laughs> All right. Uh Hobbs, did you have any questions for, for Luke? Okay. Cool. Um then Hobbs, would you introduce yourself and your playbook and background and pronouns and all that good stuff? Sure. Um I am called Aylwin. Uh, or Elwin? How, how do we want to say that? Uh, Elwin? E-I-L-W-E-N. E-I-W-E-N. Elwin? I guess my reading of it, it would be Eilwin. Eilwin? Yeah, because the name that it makes me think of is Eilonwi, which is another mm -hmm. well- Yeah. Eilwin? Eilwin, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm sure that we will get uh, this wrong. As, yes. You know? <laughs> Eilwyn, uh, she, her, and Eilwyn is the seeker. Uh, she is a patriot, uh, the text of which is, these people are family. Chaos grows all around, but you'll be damned if you'll let your family come to harm. Damned indeed. You have sought out and embraced dark power to protect that which you hold dear, or perhaps that power fell upon you and you took it up for the greater good. Either way, you seek more. This is gonna be delightful. Alwyn is curiously young. In fact, she's 16. Uh, she is a stone top native, born and bred. She was six when Alex showed up back in the day, um, and I imagine uh, took a liking to them immediately. <laughs> I think as a a really young kid, she was very much kind of a know it all. Like this is this is absolutely informing her seeker tendencies of like. I want knowledge for knowledge's sake and I want to learn everything, but she was very outspoken about it and very bratty about it and really just wanted everybody to know how much smarter she was than everybody else and got a lot of rebuke about that. And so she's very now as a, uh, a teenager, very reserved and whispery and quiet. How have you managed to pull it off that you have soft hands in a village where like, by like by the time you're 16, everyone is like basically like starting to become a full time adult, and like is right. having to work in the fields. Every time there's hard labor to be done, uh, 
she hides. What a strange coincidence. What's your, your or your family's role in the community that you had the opportunity to learn to read and write, that you have books and, and so on and so forth? Like, where'd that all come from? Maybe we've got a town judge and she's been nicking him out of the, uh, out of the Chronicle. Hmm. No. Um, or maybe we have a Chronicle and we don't have a judge. Or, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, a timeless vault does sound somewhat like a description of the Chronicle it, to me. It kind of does. Oh, boy. <laughs> and... <laughs> Spoiler alert, that's that's my that's, uh, that's the one you took. One of my minor arcana. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, uh -huh. that sounds freaking delightful. So how'd you learn to read? I was going to ask Alex if they were literate. I imagine that literacy is far more widespread as a skill in Lagos. Karina is definitely literate because she came from a wealthy merchant family. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think Alex probably probably was literate. That it was probably something that she picked up from Alex. Oh, that's yeah. very sweet. Yeah, I love the idea of like, you know, as a young child being bullied for like, you know, being too bright and asking too many questions, like heavy footfalls down the alley as Alex like scares off the other small children and then it's like, all right, it's time to learn to read. Alex was absolutely the wall that she hid behind when yeah. the bullying got bad. Oh, wow. Oh. Very good. Very wholesome. Love I, this. I love this. Yep. Can't wait to break Aylwin's heart when uh, <laughs> oh, she yeah. learns out like who Alex used to be. Oh, wait, wait till you wait till you actually meet Aylwin. I win. Oh, even better. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. So uh, welcome to our terrible village. <laughs> <laughs> who else knows about the stuff that you have? Uh Required. I kind of want it to be uh, a sibling. Uh, okay. A sibling who maybe is bigger and stronger and more mm -hmm. industriously inclined. But oh, younger. Like a pillar of the community. Yeah, right? like a norm oh, yeah. normative, normative <laughs> yeah. stone top, right? Yeah. Like expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, a 14 year old younger. sibling who is just, <laughs> you know. An ox takes, like, does all of the work that she's not. Way to twist the knife, Jeremy. Yeah. A younger big brother, basically. Uh huh. All right. And, and what is your area of expertise that you chose? The things below and what else? The things below and the makers. Okay. And I'm gathering that the chronicle, this chronicle is probably where, like reading the books that you got out of the chronicle is probably where you learn most of this stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't, I don't, you know, out of the game know that it's true, but right. Alan definitely believes it is. <laughs> what is your look again? Like, what are uh, your She's short and skinny and like very, just like the, the definition of your bookish 16, 16, but she probably looks like 13. Okay. Um, cause she's spending more time reading than, you know, out in the sun or, you know, possibly yeah. even eating. So. <laughs> Alex is doing their best on the eating front. Right. <laughs> but occasionally okay. she disappears for like three days and forgets to eat. <laughs> and by occasionally, I mean every other week. Oh dear. All right, I'm loving these characters already. Kat, did you have anything that you wanted to ask or add? Alan grew up here. You obviously have a relationship with Alex. Do you think Karina and Alan have any kind of relationship at all? She's been there about five years. Um, I think it'll depend entirely on how Karina and Alex get along. Cause but I think she would follow Alex's lead. Let's, like, let's actually put a pin in it uh, yeah. because that's like one of the later There's steps step for that. is to establishing yeah. yep. like yep. PC to PC relationships. Mm -hmm. um, we just got ahead of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's a great question. I think it's fair to assume yeah. that you're going to, you certainly know each other. Like there's no yeah. way mm -hmm. that, that you don't. All right. So round two is on your second turnaround. 
uh, describe your special possessions, which are the things that you picked on kind of the third page of your, your the third spread of your sheet. Um, and related to that, how you contribute to the village beyond just working in the field. So for special possessions, I picked, first one is a good dog, a devoted, oh. he nosed tracker who is fast. Karina has a soft spot for animals and found this, I think probably was, um, got them off a, a trader passing through Stone Top. Just took a liking to the the runt that grew up to be a very devoted pet that accompanies Karina everywhere. Okay, but can we can we ask the most important question of all? Yes. What kind of dog? They're absolutely a mutt, but probably mostly more like a, a tracking dog. Hell yeah. Um, uh, good for good for hunting, good for tracking. And then the second item is a personal token fraught with meaning. It's a shield bearing the crest of a crew that Karina used to run with back when she was in, um, I think she got all the way up to Barriers Pass, actually. Off some folks up there in exchange for one particular misadventure. And it is just a particularly sturdy shield that is both a memento and functional. So she's almost always got that on her. So you actually spent time in Barriers Pass? Yep, absolutely. Oh, wow, okay um and it's a shield from like that style correct cool a detail i'm gonna throw in here it looks nothing like the shields that get used down in stone top like i'm picturing the the shields in stone top are basically like round embossed yeah. wooden things with a metal embossed in the middle of them and so my question for you is how does it look just different than that is it humans up at Barriers Pass, or is there another race? Up yeah, there? no, they're they're people. Culturally wise, they'd be more have more of a like a Tibetan, Nepali, Himalayan feel to them. Okay, I might have to think on the shield. Honestly, sure. I have a thought to offer. Absolutely, which is like made of like bronze or brass. I was thinking it was made of something different. Yeah, so that works well for me, bronze or brass. But maybe this is just because it's made of metal, and maybe this is like a quirk. But like. It is like resonant in a way. Like when you hit it, it like clangs and makes noise and is like almost musical in a way that like a wooden shield, like you hit it and like there's a dull thud. Yes, I like that a lot, actually. Something that they do at the start of battle, like they clang their swords on their shields to make like this loud ringing noise, like a haka, or in the way that a haka is used to like psych up the warriors and also like send a message to the enemy. It's like an intimidation tactic. So you've got a, a, a well-trained hunting dog and a shield that comes from a very different place, right? Like it definitely stands out. What do you think, and, and it could be related to this and it might not be, but like, what do you do to pull your weight in the village? Karina is pretty much always willing to say, yeah, sure, I'll help out. And I think she's also frequently willing to help people who have brought their misfortune upon themselves or like made a bad decision. You're it's a good not... friend, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. And if that person is trying to do something new or different or, or make it right, she's pretty much always willing to let the, like, the past be the past and let bygones be bygones. And that definitely stems from her wanting to say, okay, this destiny was thrust upon me. I wanted nothing to do with it. So I ran as hard as I could in the other direction and tried to make my life my own. And so I think she tries to recognize that and act on it when she sees it in other people. Do you work with fields mostly? Do you keep a home? She probably spends a fair amount of time in the watch. I think okay. she wound up being fairly valuable just in terms of how much she's traveled. Questions from anyone else? Yeah, I have one. Who helped you train the dog? Ooh, that's a great question. Because like, here is a well-trained hunting dog. We haven't heard anything so far that implies an expertise in either dog training or hunting. So yeah, who in who in town helped out? Should we assume, like, I know that we are, we're going to assume that there's an innkeeper and a cobbler and yeah. like a civic tradesman. But if we haven't picked a playbook, should we assume that there is a blessed or a ranger or a marshal? Someone there's definitely hunt. hunters, right? Like there are definitely people who ply the wood and, yeah. you know, bring in meat, bring in fur, bring in, bring in stuff. And there's got to be someone who makes sure that the, the watches get filled and, and do that stuff. Whether or not that's actually a marshal, 
is up for us to decide. Same thing with like whether or not there is an official priest of, of Aratus or a priestess of, of Daniel or or, or any official roles. Um, then I think it was probably just a more senior member of the watch, like a, an experienced hunter that yeah. Karina had spent a fair amount of time with because that was where she naturally wound up volunteering a lot of her time. And she was like, well, now I've got this dog that is a puppy and I should train it. And they were like, okay, well, let me help you with that. I, I guess the other thing to kind of point out, the general expectation is that every able body is part of the watch. And and, oh, okay. and 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 it's not so much a watch; it's a militia, right? There are watchtowers, and everyone kind of rotates through, pulling a shift at night on the watchtowers. And everyone drills, and everyone's expected to like be able to protect themselves. But it's also not a thing where like, if you're unable to do so, you're well, then you're someone who gets protected, but you contribute in other ways. But you know, I still like the idea that it's an experienced hunter and someone else who's also pretty heavily involved in the watch. Like that makes a lot of sense, All right? Then how about Alex? So Alex has a chandlery. So the supplies to make candles. And soap. And yeah, and other and soap and other things out of wax, I guess. Um, and has a, a herb garden that they keep. That is like, you know, I think imagine herb garden expansively, right? Like I think that also includes like veg, you know, it's it is a vegetable and fruit and herb garden. Right. Yeah. And I think honestly, I think like working in the fields is like the the vast bulk of Alex's place in the village. Mm -hmm. I want to posit something, which is that like, I think they are maybe the closest the village has to a priest, but in a really weird sideways way. In that like, I think Stonetop has folk religion. It doesn't have like capital R religion. Sure. Like, there is no need for like, quote unquote, a capital P priest to like, you know, rituals are not really led by anyone. They're like very communal affairs. The like, the lore of the gods and the prayers are kept, again, like in the communal folk memory. Like the closest thing the village has to a priest is the person who is responsible for like upkeep of the pavilion of the gods and like making sure the altars are clean and bringing fresh candles around. And like, I think as the candle maker, like Alex has slouched into that role by default so you tend to the pavilion yeah i like i you know i sweep it every couple of days i like swap out the offerings if any of them are starting to go a bit manky i think they make like i think they make like special scented candles for each of the gods okay and then similarly there is like you know there is and then there is like a kind of candle for like mourning and for burning at a funeral and there is probably like a kind of candle for like when we need to like petition the spirits of the wild kind of writ large to like not rain terrible things down on the village you know like <laughs> why would yeah. any gods rain terrible things, things down, down on the village. the village but yeah so i think it is like it, i'm very much interested in i read a god i'm so sorry this is like me at my worst as a player i read a great paper back in my anthropology degree about the ways in which in Theravada Buddhism in Thailand, like women who are not allowed to read scripture or discuss scripture or like participate in like the high part of religion are still engaging with all of the same concerns of like, what kind of a being is this? And all those doctrinal debates by how, the f how they prepare food offerings and what kind of food offerings they prepare. Oh, interesting. And so like, I think similarly, this is a thing of like, Alex is a priest, but in a very like material way of like, when the, when the decision has to be made, what kind of candle is appropriate for this thing? Like ultimately Alex is the one who makes the decision, what candle is the right offering candle? And that is a kind of scriptural interpretation, but it's a very like sideways one. Um, just to make sure, are uh, Cat and Hobbs, does that, does the idea yeah, does that, of, of there not being any formal priests or any formal religion in town, is that okay with, with, with you two? I think it tracks. Like if there's, if we've already, we're talking about there being no judge that makes, it seems likely that there's no formal priesthood of Aratus. Mm -hmm. um, it does make it sound like maybe there isn't a currently a blessed either. Mm. Or if they are, maybe they keep to themselves and they only come in to visit every once in a while and it's more like 
right? It could be a, 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 like a wise person out in the woods or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think that sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm I'm totally down with it. It 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 absolutely works. It also should one of you your characters happen to pass away, it gives us all sorts of interesting opportunities for uh, uh, dropping a new character in. All right. Cool. Um, anyone, Cat uh, or Hobbs, questions for for Alex? How much is Alwyn? involved in the candle slash soap making oh that's a great question probably more now than when you were eight like i think it's one of those things where alex has like very calculatedly you know like carved out the areas into which you are increasingly allowed as you've grown up because like yeah with like soap and lye and like you know various like herbal compounds like lying around I don't think people in general get to go in Alex's house because it is full <laughs> of things that are varyingly poisonous if you don't know what you're doing. I think Alex's front yard is a room where people visit and Alex's house is the back room where no one gets to visit. <laughs> As it were. Um, I also just like to... To establish real quick, just for myself, because like I can feel myself thinking it, a chandlery demands beeswax. Where are the bees? And the answer to this is, I think there is a colony of wild bees down in the Great Wood quite close to the bluff. In Sounds like a kind of overgrowth, like it very much has the vibe that it was like maybe a thousand years ago in the days of the makers, it was like a garden, right? It's like, you know, sprawling blackberry bushes and all these fruit trees grow, grown like totally feral and rampant and like flowers just like thick on the ground. And like, if you squint in the winter, you can kind of see the architectural bones of like, was this an orchard once? Gotcha. But like, who could say? Maybe, maybe you know, maybe it just happened that way. And so yeah, I think that's that's where they go for for wax, and I think that's also where they get some of the like little plants they transplant into their garden. Mm -hmm. And I think their garden also has a lot of stuff they like bought with them from Lygos. Like so, seeds I think like that they that that they that they brought. Yeah, up. like I think there's probably a lemon tree growing in their garden, mm. and it is the only lemon tree for like a hundred miles. There is probably like a little patch of ginger growing somewhere. There's maybe even like a row of very carefully tended crocuses. And like once a year, like we get the holy harvest of like, oh my God, 12 threads of saffron. And like, it's a huge deal. Awesome. All right. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll win. Tell us about your special possessions, please. Um, well, I clearly have scribes tools and books and scrolls, mm -hmm. which I acquired from our maybe a chronicle um i've also got a laboratory of uh chemicals reagents vials measures that sort of thing is it perhaps the back room in alex's house <laughs> maybe a bit <laughs> i would say that the most likely person to, to like have a bunch of chemicals would actually be the tanner Okay. Um, because like, they're gonna have lye, tannins, salt. To yeah, salt. Sense. Sure. Yeah. No. 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 That. That. That makes total sense. But also, like, st stone top is full of whiskey, right? And like, mm -hmm. from that, you can derive high proof, like isopropyl right. alcohols. Mm hmm. <laughs> and I have this friend who's got a back room. Yeah, it's like it's a very hodgepodge collection of like, right, chemicals. which is why yeah. I can make every season. 1d4 uses of naphtha. <laughs> Fucking naphtha. Ever, <laughs> like, is there ever going to be a seeker that doesn't choose that one? <laughs> oh my. I want the sparky, sparky boom boom. This feels consistent, so I would like to volunteer. Did you somehow finagle that recipe out of Alex? Oh, absolutely. Because yes, yeah. When I oh, say yeah. they, when I say they had an inglorious career in violence, like. That is exactly the kind of energy yeah. I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, this was this was absolutely a like walk in the woods conversation that was like all over the place and straight it got bits and dangerously bombs. close to like what did I do down south? 
and Alex just kind of whooshed past that and was like, let me tell you about this cool thing that I learned how to make. Yeah, and like Alan was like, hi. What is your role in the village? They have me doing accounting on the granary. Mm -hmm. They have me tracking everything. Like, fine, you're not going to show up and work in the fields. At least keep track of what we're bringing back. Okay. And then probably also like someone that people would come to when they like, you know, have a letter that needs to be read and, and stuff like that or. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or sent or yeah. whatever. And like trade accountant too, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the sense that like when the village is like, hey, let's send a shipment down to Marsh Edge, you're the one who's yeah. like, well, here's how much yeah. we can spare and still have food come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, I feel like Alex, they tried to make you do that because they were like, hey, here's this person from down south who can read well, who and knows, who and, knows numbers and, and letters. And there's yeah. numbers and all of this stuff. Maybe they can do, and you were just like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. Nope. But well, I'm actually thing. interested in because that actually also seems like the kind of thing that Karina would actually be a natural fit for, having come from as a, a merchant. Yeah, from a merchant. But family. I've been doing this for longer than Karina's been here. Oh, interesting. And Karina, so I started even... doing this when I was like eight. Cat, did you when you grew up, like when you were growing up, do you think that you were? like being groomed to be a merchant's kid or? Follow up question. Whatever well, you were being groomed to be, did it take? I think they probably wanted her to take over the family business, but she found being a merchant interesting only in the sense of getting to travel. I think the bookkeeping and haggling annoyed her and when they let her alone long enough to try to mind the shop she'd do things like make terrible trade deals in exchange for like bullshit from some somewhere else in the country she'd be like "Ooh, here's an interesting animal skull and it's got a red ruby in it and they'd be like you gave away how many bags of grain for this and so like they made it like, twice and then they never left her alone to like mind over oversee transactions again because she'd always just be like oh this is boring um, did you did you happen to bring that skull up with you <laughs> and maybe um give it to me <laughs> um all right i I, uh, I guess I, I wanted to make sure that we weren't stepping on like your character's kind of niche like, being sure. like coming from a merchant family with with uh like 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 that particular role going to Ireland. um so but it sounds like you're you're that's not necessarily something that you would have wanted your character to be all about. No, she, I don't think that she would um, shed many tears over leaving that behind. You might have no. smacked me around and been like, why are you doing it the dumb way? Here, do it this way. Yeah. And Alan was like, ooh, thank you. And <laughs> yeah, I think that's accurate. Like, I think she probably like had, by the time she was 18, like memorized quite a bit about the field of being a merchant, but like, wasn't that interested in doing it herself and was more than happy to let this kid with this knack for numbers and letters and tracking fine details be the one to do it. The fewer questions asked about her personal history, like she has that in common with Alex, where she's like, I don't really want to talk about who why I, I was. know how to read, because that's why, yeah. that's a loose thread that unravels a whole <laughs> mess that I don't want to talk yeah. about. Like, no, no, that's a uh, we're going to talk about other things now. Not interested in discussing that. All right. Awesome. Let's go to round three. And this one's going to be different for everyone. Oh, um, yeah. So this is where, let's see here, if we go back to Karina on this one, um, tell us of your fear and anger and the last time they caused you trouble. Every once in a while, Karina will still have a, some another like omen filled dream. And they're pretty rare. I think she has them maybe like once or twice a year at most. I think she's had them a few more times, like slightly increased in frequency since coming to Stone Top, and it makes her uneasy. 
and the thing that she's afraid of is that she's right and that um the first thing she's afraid of rather is that she's certain she's not actually cut out for whatever this preordained destin is that sooner or later this is going to catch up to her and whatever big task or role or quest that she's supposed to fulfill that she's not cut out for it at all and that it's going to go badly and then the second thing that she's afraid of if they are actually right what she might actually be capable of doing um because those the the omens she always have the dreams and omens that she always sees are always horrible like everything is on fire and there's so much destruction and there's voices screaming and she's like is this what i'm being asked to do what am i capable of and so she tries not to think about that too much i think that's the other reason why she is afraid of what she's capable of is because she's actually 95 percent of the time she's very easygoing she's very mm. chill she's very forgiving when people want to if they fuck up and they want to try to fix it she's like that's totally fine but she has when there is something that sets off her temper it's like dropping a match into a can of kerosene um she just goes up like a flame the things that i chose for what makes you burn with righteous anger is wanton cruelty and an unnecessary suffering um violence to children animals and the innocent um and then threats to your loved ones so the last time this happened was just uh, somebody passing through tried to cheat her friend the innkeeper out of paying for a night um and sneak out and karina like cold clocked the guy and didn't stop um, and they somebody had to pull her off him. I think that he was stealing from her also, that he had gotten into quite a bit of her food um, and was making off with both food and personal belongings and then was trying to leave, sneak out first thing in the morning without being detected after having robbed the, the innkeeper. She was coming home from a night's watch mm. and saw him sneaking out um, and loading things into a like horse uh saddlebags on the horse um including something that she recognized as being like personal belongings of the innkeeper was it one of stone top's horses that he was also stealing you know what in for a penny in for a pound yeah for sure she had seen him like before she left for the night's watch the night before and he was like funny and charming and everybody seemed to like him very much and anything he needed they would have given him for free but instead he was sneaking out in the wee hours in the morning after having tricked everyone and was stealing a lot of things and so he really took advantage of their friendliness and welcoming him into town um, so it was adding insult to injury for him to basically like spit in the face of their generosity. So I'm going to like, I'm, I'm totally cool with that backstory. Like I love, I, and I like the idea that that that's what tripped you over, but that doesn't strike me as the three things that you've selected. That strikes me as cowardice, treachery, and selfishness. I think that the cherry on top of this particular Sunday for me is that like in medieval Welsh lore, horse theft specifically was like a really fucking big deal oh yeah like stealing a horse was the same as like violating guest right like that was you do you don't fucking do that yeah and that feels like it feels like that tied up with the fact that you two are a horse thief like originally like whole cocktail of like yeah. messy unresolved bullshit there oh man i'd forgotten about that the the whole you were a horse horse thief from your hmm huh yep mm. that's a would-be hero anyone have any follow-up questions i would like to volunteer because i'm conscious that right now we have we have one side of our pc triangle feels very strong and two right. sides of it feel a little stunted uh i would like to volunteer myself as the puller offer if that is a thing <laughs> that you're interested in I love that, that Alex was the one who like hauled her off. Of she was this. just like, mm, no, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they would know when this is going to get just messy and gross and not actually accomplish anything. Yeah, right. like they know exactly <laughs> where the line is at which this stops mm -hmm. being like, I am cathartic like, oh, venting and like- There was the I'm line, okay. We're okay, done. we're done now. 
Beautiful. All right. Uh, let's jump to Alex. Um, yeah. So tell us about, I always forget the wording. Why don't you read this one? Let me praise the day. Ah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Alex is the appointed servant of Helior the Daybringer, god of the sun and light, beacon of hope and mercy. Apparently. <laughs> I don't think that's how Alex would characterize it, like, even a little. Um, yeah, so the worship of Helior is, uh, Jeremy, I have chosen two, because uh, rules are a suggestion. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think, because I want to characterize it both as like, yes, it is most common in Lagos in the south, but up here in Stone Top, it is a new thing. Helio's name probably appears sideways in some pieces of folklore, but like, you know, the idea of like there being a collection of stories associated with Helio and there being some substance to it, I mm -hmm. think is new. And like Al Alex is the one who is bringing that, that cluster of myths. Uh, I think Helio is worshiped through joyful song which I think traditionally is like a group exercise and involves a bunch of like really sick harmonies and like, you know, kind of like cool, mm -hmm. like a little bit like sea shanty or like uh, work song uh, yeah. energies. Yep. Uh, I think in a lot of like union, like big strong unionist, like 60s folk song vibes. Um, and so I think there is something a little bit sad in the fact that like Alex doesn't have anything, anyone to sing those songs with. Has he, have, have they not taught those songs to the fellow workers, like to the fellow field, field hands? I mean, you know, I, I think, I think they have on a casual basis, but like, you know, back home, like every day there would be singing mm, okay. and there would be group singing in this communal sense. And like here, like, maybe sometimes when it's you know when they're at the public house and it's their turn to name the song like maybe there's like a round or two but it's very much not the same thing like most of their devotional singing is done alone karina like you're from oh, the south yeah. is, does karina like follow Heliore? i was actually gonna ask the same thing once once Alex was done with the intro i was gonna say like karina was absolutely raised um, in a family that was pretty devoted to Helior. And so I suspect what happened is when she ran away, that kind of, she was like, oh, this is my past and I'm leaving Fuck it behind. That. Yeah. And then she got a little older and, and like, I think unexpectedly, like first recognized Alex would be like, oh, you're, you're that violent guy, Mr. Notorious. But then eventually was like, almost like a way of reconnecting with her past and her heritage, like this opportunity to um, worship Helior in the way that she literally hasn't done since she left Lagos 15 years before. She can make like uh, traditional Lagosy foods. Like so that's something she learned from yes. her mother. So like she can make like the meals that they would share on the holy days. Um, and Alex know. has the, like actually has the lemons and the cinnamon yeah. and the shit that like, Otherwise, exactly. in Stone Top, you can't, yeah. I think Alex and Karina also probably bitch to each other about how fucking cold Stone Top is. Like, why did anybody come up here and like camp out in this <laughs> shit middle of winter and everything's wet, cold, and it's terrible, and where's the sun? Beautiful. I love it. it iconic. Uh, so, in the Pavilion of the Gods, Helios Shrine uh, has recently been restored by Alex. Um, was it restored or was it just like created anew, do you think? It was restored. Like the, the thing that I want to really characterize here is the name of Helior, the existence of Helior is not the thing that is unknown in the North. It is like the worship of Helior and specifically and particularly like the institutional okay. worship. So like, I think Helior absolutely has a sh had a shrine. I just think like no one really like thought about Helior much. And so it like was a bit neglected. Whereas Alex was like, no, okay, like this is, it's not the three main gods and then this like major sun spirit. It's like, no, here are the four gods. And mm -hmm. like, we are gonna take that seriously. Uh, yeah, my predecessor, the previous light bearer uh, wrote many works of sublime beauty, 
Indeed, I think many of the devotional songs are attributed to them. Uh, faced one of the things below uh, and <laughs> died in their bed peacefully. Hmm. That sounds lovely. Yeah, it was uh... a pretty good life, all told. <laughs> Uh, and I came into my powers uh, after a visitation from Helior or one of his servants. But again, like, I want to, I want to, like, very explicitly, like, not in the, like, burning light and, like, you know, giant wings and, like, explicit supernatural power. Like, I think in the darkest moment of Alex's, like, blood soaked, miserable, grimy past, like, a kind person, like, reached out and made all the difference. So do you think it was like after a battle that you had won or a battle that had gone sideways? Do you ever really win battles? Well, <laughs> I guess that's where I was going. It was like, was this some atrocity that you were a part of? It, I don't think it was after like the worst thing they ever did. Gotcha. Like there was nothing special about the blood-soaked night after which they were visited and like kind of awakened to a better way it there should have just like been an another day okay cool i have picked my thing below because i think it is a good way to reincorporate uh i think it was uh el rash aura that's that's who I was probably going to go yeah. with too. You know, it's one of the, the the specific named things below, and it's specifically related to the the, the Lidlitz orb, which Got is okay. the arcana that that. Um, but yeah. I'm about to tell you about. It. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. So, uh, my my step three is to describe my major arcana and tell you about uh, my minor arcana too, and I'm going to do that out of order because uh, I found my major arcanum uh, in one of my minor arcanum. Mm. So the uh, the place that I kept spending all of my uh, time that I was supposed to be working in the fields, the place that I would run away to and read, uh, was this timeless vault. Um, and the, uh, the text says, high in the hills or mountains, I would argue that it's a little closer to stone top um but a pair of massive stone doors are set into the hillside the markings outside are faded and covered in lichen the doors aren't locked one lies a bit ajar inside the vault and its contents are untouched by time free of dust or mold clearly some magic is afoot and there's a bunch of awesome stuff inside of it that i got to read and take and it was super not cursed or anything um but this is my this is the uh the minor arcanum that i have actually unlocked um because by spending so much time here i noticed that there were preserving runes around uh and i figured out uh how they work and i can now uh mark things with preserving runes and on a con roll uh i will preserve the contents uh of the room from dust, debris, spoilage, rot, rust, etc. But one of the things uh, that I found on a very recent visit to the uh, to the vault was the staff of the lidless orb, um, which is a sphere of greenish glass etched with a cat's eye design set atop, atop a staff of rough pitted black iron. The orb catches the light and seems to glow and the pupil seems to widen in the dark and narrow to a slit in daylight. Sometimes you would swear it seems to look about on its own, but that's preposterous. Um, so I found it in the timeless vault only a few weeks ago um and of course immediately 
had to, you know, mess around with it and see how it worked and uh, got my, got my first mark on the, uh, on the Arcanum. Um, but what I, what I want to assert about the price that I paid for this is that it was a long time coming that this is actually the, uh, the result of having gone to the uh the vault so many times as a kid and having spent my childhood there and having given this vault like the youthful energy or something like that like it was sucking something out of Eilwyn at every time she went there and finally had paid enough that it was like, okay, I'll unlock one extra bit. Jeremy, uh, on a six minus when Aylwin marked one below, uh, what terrible vision of some distant time or place? I was uh, wondering. Did she see? it quite possibly ties into the previous light bearer and or uh, uh, um, Karina's destiny. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to think about that bit. Um, so tried messing with it, got a vision of a distant time or very terrible vision. Of a distant Not a great vision, a terrible. Just like clearly the orb needs a contact lens. <laughs> really blurry and out of focus. Some, some visine. It just needs, you know, like it's like got a stigmatism. <laughs> um okay, but but the vault basically presented this to you. Right. After sucking some amount of your innocence or and life energy, mm -hmm. or you're a scrawny kid, right? I'm a scrawny kid. Would people say that your your growth has been stunted? Oh, absolutely. All right. I'm short and scrawny. No matter how much I feed her. Yep. She just <laughs> never, you know. And in oh, fact, please. maybe it's the uh, the vault that's been responsible for the whole I disappear for three days and forget to eat. Uh, it steals like time. Where do you think this vault actually is? Oh. I was going to say it's in the... Um, the cliff at the bottom of the cliff. Uh, okay. uh, Does it have some bears living out. in it by any chance? <laughs> no, there's doors on this one. Um, <laughs> that are the one is ajar so that this scrawny little kid can get in, but probably not bears. Got it. Maybe like um, a bear cop. So it's basically like at the bottom of the bluff that Stone Top sits on in the Great Wood. Correct. That, pair of doors it is probably like almost completely overgrown cool and what are the what about the other arcana so the one that i have but have not unlocked is the strange skull and antlers which possibly karina brought from down south it sounds like maybe no that's like no the definition of like like the description of that thing okay like 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 the size of a horse right right i know I mean, she was just talking about this like bad trade decision that she made that was a oh. skull and i was like Ew. <laughs> um it doesn't seem like something she'd be dragging along for 15 nah. to where did you find it um and also i feel like a merchant you... yeah i feel like a merchant brought it in and i'm gonna go with the whole like my parents are the tanners and we keep it proudly displayed on a wall of the house all right i'm i've, yep. I've immediately like like your you like, your, your parents your character's parents just sort of like pop into my mind as fully <laughs> people right now is this a situation with your parents where the apple did not far fall from far fall far from the tree they don't have a problem with me being like i am oh good that's that's telling <laughs> Yep. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, what about the, the third one? And the, yeah, the third one is a crumbling arch on a rare dry spot in Farrier's Fen, besieged by foulness, is an ancient arch that still improbably stands. Lichen and moss grow thick and healthy, but the keystone remains clear, engraved with a sigil that makes the eyes water and that drives evil away. So that is my third, uh, which I will remit to you uh, and you have a, ask a lead what. On it, right? Yes, I have a lead on it. Okay. Um, I think the lead is you found a description of this, like in some book. Mm. And then, you know, like some well traveled explorer or something like that came through uh, and like told, like, like you get, you got to talk, like, was telling you about some of the stuff that they'd seen in Farrier's Fen and um, like described this to you. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. And you <laughs> found the, 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 like, was it this? And like, yeah. And then you got sort of like directions basically on how to find it. And then that guy mm -hmm. went off and got mauled by, uh, you know, like a Thunder Drake or something like that. So shame. Classic. <laughs> it's why you don't leave the road on mm -hmm. the flats. Like, come on, guy. A now dead adventurer. Emotionally, how do you feel about the stuff? when you like have it in your like does it feel good to be around does it feel kind of creepy to be around does it feel does it make you feel powerful to have it What's it absolutely affect? it makes me feel powerful but i also feel like i shouldn't have it which is mm. why the only person who knows about it is my sibling no they saw me like sneaking it back into stone top like what you got there i'm like a smoothie and <laughs> But it was one of those like i i don't think i should tell people i have this i probably shouldn't have it it should this is taking this out of the vault is beyond just you know nicking some scrolls to read like this is this is probably not cool but it's mine oh i, ha I have a secret Shit. a powerful secret I think I know what the vision was. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Because one of the things that's been bugging me about this Everyone is... mock XP. No. <laughs> one of the things that's been bugging me about, like, the, the, the story, and I, lo I love this character, but I'm thinking mm -hmm. about the whole background of the Patriot, right? Of, like, right, the, right. You're, you're delving in this... The protector. To protect yeah. your family. Yep. And I think, or, or your loved ones, and I think what you got was a vision of Stone Top, like, on fire and being weighed laced and desolated and just, like, smote, and a promise, like, some inclination that, that you could help and that there was something that you could do, for, do, uh, do about it. Um, and it will surprise no one to learn that Karina was also part of that vision. <clears throat> um, was yeah. Alex? Uh, un unclear, right? There's enough okay. stuff going on. There was some um, large silhouettes sure. in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of them could have been, sure. <laughs> if I may offer a detail, uh, and like Jeremy, feel free to... I think part of this, part of the fire in this vision and part of the strangeness is wherever, wherever the fire was burning on like the maker stone, it was like the, the stone was burning like wood. Oh, mm. I like it. The normal stone that we just dug out of the ground was fine, but right. like but those big, stone... impossibly perfectly cut, you know, the like 90 stones, degree yeah. angle maker stones yeah. were like, yeah. Oh, what about the stone itself? Like, you know, the, the stone of stone. The stone. I, I wouldn't care to speculate as to uh, right. the makers <laughs> or otherwise of the stone itself. I am not a seeker and I, I am not steeped in lore about such things. <laughs> um, stone town. Oh, actually, stone. on which point, actually, hold up. Let me turn that into a question. Because like, 
you are the seeker. You are Steve Devore about the makers. Uh-huh. We do have access to the Chronicle slash a horrible room, which like, <laughs> given the runes, like, you know, me, Luke, my running theory is definitely like that the Chronicle is some kind of a maker vault. It contains a thing, bo- a things mm. below thing. Yeah. It's rune warded. You know, like that sounds like makers to me. So like, my question is, what does, what does Eilwen think the stone is? Like, does the she stone? think it's a, like in the middle of town? Like in the middle of town. Does she think that's a maker thing or not? Cause I think it seems to me obvious that she would have an opinion whether it's correct or not. There are many actually conflicting at odds reports of what the stone is nothing is conclusive and it's the only thing that she doesn't know what to believe is it the kind of thing where it's like there are a bunch of people all talking about it and they're all like talking about it as a mystery that they all have theories about or is it like you find seven different accounts that are all this is the origin story of the stone and they're all fundamentally different from each other i think it's more the latter um and like not just this is the origin story but like people's fucking lab notes right like people have done science to this thing and gotten incredibly contradictory results gotcha like it. Can't do science on God. So she do, she didn't go anywhere near it. <laughs> like like actively, that thing is like, cursed. Like, like yeah, actively, no, like, like, like avoids doesn't... the town square. <laughs> I did want to propose one like slight. It's not even a retcon, but I had said that I didn't think Karina was um, interested in doing like counting, and I don't think she's good at counting. But I think she does just because she's traveled so much. Um, does sort of participate in like the haggling and discussions with merchants that come into town. So I think she is involved in like trade and and that might've been how she um, ran into Karina, uh, not Karina, Jesus, Eilwen initially is um, because Eilwen was in there and she was like, what is this? Infant? Who is this literal Maybe child? <laughs> um, who, who, who let this small baby into the granary? Um, but I just, I wanted to mention that before I forgot about it. It is midnight 30 here. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go to bed. Gotta put a fork in it. Uh, let's do this, like, sometime in the next week, if y'all, or, like, maybe in the next couple of days, if y'all could, um, like, take a look at the NPCs and, Mm -hmm. like, the next, the next round on your, your playbook is, uh, name an NPC or two you know, that, that answers the questions. Yep. Um, yep. And sure. then, um, like, yeah, actually, why don't we just try and do the, like, the next couple of steps just casually over the next few days over Discord. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, and then we'll fucking sleep.